So the Helix Nebula looks really nice. Um, if you guys are kind of scared uh, to take a look at it because you need to be in a dark zone or you have a too big of a telescope and because it's huge, try it. So in a 12 inch F5, which has a 1500 millimeter focal length, it's actually pretty easy. Now, again, using the two inch, uh, 31 millimeter, 82 degree field of view and a focal reducer of 50% or 0.50 um, makes it, you know, smaller. So more smaller means more compact, should be brighter. Putting a narrow band two inch filter really brings it up. Like it really, I'm very impressed with it and considering it's pretty low, uh, much, much better than the six inch. Okay, we took a look at M30. That's very easy globular cluster. Give it a shot, even though that's, I believe, even lower than the Helix. And the globular can take some power. So bump up the power. It's not as good as Hercules, but still a good globular cluster. And we're just taking a look at, you know, the uh, Saturn Nebula. You can easily see it in this size scope with a 38 millimeter inch and a quarter eyepiece and then popping a 13 Nagler with a narrow band filter is better. And then going to a 6.7. Um, the only thing a little bit disappointing in this one, you don't see color. It's just kind of like a round blobby thing, you know? So it, it's okay. Take a look at it to get it off your list, but it's nothing amazing. You know what I want to do? In another video, I think, I am going to, I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, I am going to be changing this base here. The base, I think, is too wide, the circle. They have these side panels that help it, I guess, a little bit more structural. But I don't think you really need it. My other 12 inch just has the three, you know, the front panel and the two side panels. I don't think it needs these small side structure. I don't think you need it. And also, how it bevels the, the base, I don't know if you can see it, kind of bevels out. It makes this circle almost like it's a 14 inch Dobson or 15 inch Dobson. I can't even get it through my patio door anymore at home, but I also don't like the height. So when you're, I'm looking, you know, straight up, it's okay, but you're not always looking to the zenith or straight up. So I think what I want to do is make this Dobson base taller by about, I don't know, six to eight inches more. Um, so when I'm standing Zenith, yeah, actually probably gonna be about eight to 10 inches more higher. So I'm probably gonna raise it, but also I'm gonna make the circle base. I'm gonna make it out of plywood again. And I'm also gonna make that circle base smaller so I can go through my patio door so a bit diameter smaller, but a bit taller, like eight to 10 inches. And uh, we'll see how that goes. I'll show you guys. I'm gonna do that during winter when I have nothing to do at home type of thing. But anyway, uh, let me get to a couple other things that we haven't or haven't showed you guys or we haven't talked about. Let's get to it. Okay guys, so while my eyes were dark, getting dark adaptive, we, I looked at three things. One was, while we were around the Saturn Nebula, you might as well take a look at M72 and M73. Um, one's a globular cluster, it's okay. Again, get it off your list, uh, do it now while uh, it's an autumn thing and you still got some time. M73, yeah, it's not so fancy, but again, get it off your list, it's okay. Um, now, when we were at Mexico with a six inch, I'm not sure if you guys remember, we were looking at the Sculptor Galaxy. Now it is pretty low. On the screen, you can almost see like it's getting close to the horizon type of thing. So it is low, but in a 12 inch and a 13 Nagler, I'm actually pretty surprised. It's actually very extended, very big. Now, not as big as the Andromeda Galaxy or anything like that, but pretty good. So don't be afraid to go like low to the horizon, especially if you're like out of the city, pump up that power a little bit. But I bet you, even if I lowered it even lower power, it'd be smaller, but it'd be more compact and brighter. So again, looks pretty good. I would recommend it. 
And again, I looked at that uh, in Mexico and I'm actually pretty impressed uh, with it here. It's two zones darker here, but it's much lower here. Anyway, let me find a couple other things that we can talk about. And then uh, that looks pretty good that maybe you guys can check out. And if you guys want, if it's something that you've already looked at, whatever zone, tell me, I'd like to hear how you guys, you know, are seeing some of this stuff and what telescope are you guys using? So here's one I just took a look at, NGC 1087. It is barely detectable in a 12 inch, even in this zone. So it's okay. Well, it's very disappointing, but I guess if you want to knock it off your list, try, but it's, it's very... I was in this area, there's one called Cetus A. So I tried that one, it's a little bit brighter. Uh, I believe Cetus A is also M77. So it's pretty good and it, okay, much better than the one we just took a look at it. So try, and in Andromeda, uh, there's one called NGC 7331. Now that's was pretty good, uh, pretty extended. Uh, again, nothing like Andromeda, but it's pretty decent one, better than the, these first two that uh, I was looking at. Um, I'm not sure how much more we're gonna do. I was doing some pictures with the cell phone, uh, like 30 seconds all over, and I'm starting to get a bit hungry. What I'm thinking is, call it a night for now and I come back and maybe because it's super clear better than two days ago what I want to do is wait till the Orion is up and then try to look at the Orion with a 12 inch in the zone two because normally with Orion I think it's coming up at around 2 a.m. right now and when it's at its most highest it's probably closer to like 4 4 30 which if I wake up then, it's kind of hard to do, but I can sleep in tomorrow. But it's like, if I wait that long, oh, I can see Jupiter just popped out now. The Pleiades is out. Capella is out now, and Aruga constellation. Normally, I don't see the Orion constellation or nebula from here, the zone two, because by the time it actually gets out, uh, normally, again, it's we're approaching almost in you know, last week of October, November's right around the corner. And I'm probably only gonna come up to this camping site one more time and it's already cold. So it depends if it's gonna be clear, then the next time I come up, uh, it might not be. And then that's it, that's it for the year. And again, for me to see Orion at a decent, it's gonna be like around 2.30, but when it's at its highest, it will be about 4 a.m. And a lot of times I just can't stay up that late, being that my body's used to getting up at 6 a.m. But I wanna try if it's gonna stay clear all night and see how the Orion Nebula looks in a 12 inch from a Bortle to 9.30 right now. So it's actually pretty early. So maybe if I eat, have a nap, come back in about three, four hours, pretty good. So I'm thinking packing it for now and I'll show you guys or we'll come back in time for the Orion Nebula. And then there we go. And that'll be the end of uh, this. And I hope in two weeks when I come up again, it's not gonna be snowing and it's gonna be clear because that will be the last time I observe up here. I can even see clearly like the double cluster is a big glow. Even with these lights on, I can see the Andromeda Galaxy uh, with averted vision, it's huge. It takes up like a big chunk of sky. But anyway, guys, we'll be back. I'll see you after. Hey guys, so I came back out a few hours later. Orion's not quite high, high, but it was high enough. All right, I turn off my Telrad. Sorry, ride gel. I don't think so. There. Okay, I think with a 31 millimeter, my big two inch and focal reducer plus a narrow band filter was probably the best I've ever seen with the Orion Nebula. If I've ever seen it that good is because I'm never in a dark zone this late at night and this late of the year. So to this year, I decided to stay later up in the evening plus come longer 
Uh, even though I got two jackets on, and it's a little chilly, but it's, it's okay. There's no wind, hasn't started snowing yet. Anyway, we also went to M78. I thought I could see it in the city, but I wasn't quite sure. Easily seen in a 12 inch from here. Uh, then we went down, you know, I tried the Flame Nebula. I just, I'm not sure I am seeing it there or is it the glow from uh, the star or the, the Nebula filter, you know what I mean? So it's hard for me to say, so I'm not sure. You guys tell me, have you ever seen it visually? I tried the horse head and I spent a lot of time. I'm talking about minimum half an hour or more different powers from low power my 31 uh, with, with, the, with the reducer I went to a Nagler 13 a 6.7 ultra wide a 4.7 ultra wide I wasn't sure if I'm going too close if I need to go far uh, with nebula filters I can see a glow but I can't see the actual head so you guys tell me what do you think I was doing wrong I believe I'm seeing the nebula but do you need really, really low power? Do you have to go extremely high? Because the head is small comparing to the nebula itself. So you guys tell me if I saw it, or I just don't know, like I just can't confirm the shape of the head type of thing. Anyway, so went to M35, which is a nice cluster. You can see that from the city. So if you guys got a 10 inch or 12 inch and you're in the city, then uh, take a look at that one. That one's nice. I can't remember everything I was looking at. Just because every time I turn on the lights and turn on the camera, I lose my dark adaptive. And I, you know, sometimes looking at these dim galaxies or nebulas, it kills, you know, my night vision. And then I gotta wait 10, 15 minutes to start all over. But, um, oh, the Crab Nebula. So I've never seen the Crab Nebula, this is the first time. Again, it's because in the city, there's just too much light pollution. I didn't even try, well, actually I've tried before with a 10 inch SCT, but I, I don't think I've seen it. Um, so I tried with a 31, then I tried with a 13 Nagler with a Nebula filter. I mean, you see a glow, kind of what resembles, you know, what you see in pictures, but not all those swirly parts, of course. Um, but yeah, just because again, I never stay up this late. Um, in a dark zone I just uh, so now I can really say okay it's fairly easy in this zone with this size and uh, I really can't remember what else I, I did off camera but um, I think I'm pretty content with that so anyway I'll see you guys on the next next video next time I come up is gonna be into November and that's probably gonna be my last weekend I'm gonna spend three four days up here and that's gonna be it. So whatever I see, I, I'm gonna see. Anyway guys, I'm getting tired. It's time for bed. I will see you guys on the next uh, video. Like, comment, and subscribe. If you know anybody getting in the hobby, please share my channel with them. And thanks for you guys getting me to the 32,000 subscribers. If you know anybody on the forums that maybe has asked something like this, share my channel with them too. And they also have members. Uh, videos where once a month, I do post a video strictly for the members that doesn't go on, on the regular public and that's it. So if you want to join that, it's only 99 cents a month. I made it as cheap as possible and it helps me grow the channel by uh, buying some stuff to always show you guys type of thing. And why not you? Why not me?